Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to another episode of Modern Manners Guys Quick and Dirty Tips for a More Polite Life. On today's episode, I have two of my favorite people on the internet, Grandma Gail and Kim Merstein, the co hosts of Excuse My Grandma. So, Kim and Gail, welcome to the show. Thank you for, Thank having, you for having us. us. Good to see you. I had to give Gail, Grandma Gail the first shot. Sorry, Kim. You know. <laughs> yes. Well, it's, it's age before beauty. Let's there you that. there you go there you go well it, it's it's funny because you know for those for those of you that don't know gail and kim and i will uh i'll let them do an intro but i came across them through social media scrolling i found it to be insanely hilarious as a jewish guy myself listening to a grandmother give advice i can you know i had that more i get it from my mom right now too so it's always good and always funny to hear what um they both have to say but uh, Kim, can you just let us know how, start off with really how the podcast came about um, yeah. and then we'll kind of roll into things. Well, I'm happy you find it relatable because that's <laughs> definitely the reason we continue to create content. But it first started, I guess it's almost been three years right. now. I don't know where the pandemic. Time went. pandemic. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. During the early days of the pandemic, I live in New York City, but I went to live with my grandparents in Florida. And I was actively going on a lot of dates and my grandma was getting very involved in all of it, um, as she does with most things in my life. But we realized all the generational differences when it comes to dating and relationships uh, in, you know, today's world versus the last time my grandma was single, which was in the 1963. (laughs) So, you know, there's been a lot of differences, dating apps, ghosting, all of these things we deal with today. So we started our podcast together first to kind of educate each other. Um, And then we started TikTok and Instagram shortly after that and continued to grow our audience. And have fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does sound like you guys have a lot of fun together, which I love. Uh, You know, the the family aspect of it is very sweet to watch. And I do think that's awesome. I um, but I know you, you really kicked things off with the podcast talking about the generational gap or the generational difference between, you know, Grandma Gail's days and present day. So mm-hmm. I really, I know there's a long list of saying what's the biggest difference, you know, of the, of the differences between, you know, Grandma Gail's era and, and Kim's. But uh, Gail, what do you think is the biggest difference that you've realized that is something that you find to be the most annoying? Well, I don't know if it's the most annoying, but the biggest difference is that in general, couples didn't sleep together before they got married. So that was a, you know, a generational thing. I mean, because you you feared being coming pregnant and um, you just didn't do it. It wasn't part, and you certainly didn't live together. That was uh, a taboo. Nobody mm-hmm. would go back to their mothers and said, oh, I think I'm going to move in with Harvey and Harvey. live with each other. I mean, that just didn't happen in the 50s and yeah, the 60s. Yeah, how come no one's name is Harvey? Anyway? <laughs> <laughs> because Harvey became extinct yeah. in the 60s. But the truth is that really is the big difference. And um, I can understand why we've generated a whole different way of living and dating now. Mm-hmm. And actually, I think it's for the better. Um, because in those days, you know, we, we went out of one family. We went from our parents to our husband's. And we really never were exposed to the world. Most of us didn't work. We worked as as a mother and at taking care of our children. And that was a full-time job. And we were liked it. I mean, I liked it. I don't know if all the women liked it, but I did like it. Uh, so that was, the, I, I would say, when, that's the biggest difference that I would say between dating then and Yeah, and now. I just think now because of that, like people uh, play the field more and like get married later in life. Uh-huh. And, um, no question. Have more relationships and sexual experiences and all of these things we before they actually settle down. And, right. Yeah. Right. I'm but, not sure settling down. I'm not still sure. I'm not convinced that just because you've slept around more and had more experiences that you have a better life. I'm still not sure of that. Um, cause sometimes like in the Indian old fashioned Indian families and, and uh, you know, they, they fixed up, uh, like marriages, arranged marriage. Arranged marriage. Yeah. yeah. And I think those work out better than marriages that they had to go out and find their own mates. So, I, you know, it just, I think it's a different psychological um, picture and, yeah. I, and I'm neither right or wrong. And, um, and I do believe that uh, young marriages were very beneficial in the fact that you could start families younger. And when you're younger, you have more patience. There's no question in my mind. 
a 40 or a 50 year old woman or man are not as good with young children. They don't have the patience. They're they're in the middle of a career. They're they're doing all kinds of, they've already done. But if you're done. comparing like 25 and 35. That's you, a difference. You, you, there's there's a, a difference. Yeah, we still have energy. At you have energy, but you're losing your patience. Maybe. And a lot of times. Yeah, I already lost my patience like years ago. I know. And, but not only that, I'm not only losing patience, but I think you're at a different point in your careers. Yeah. So, you know, you get very, very successful or you're doing well. And it's very hard to be up all night with a crying baby. Uh, so I think there are lots of pluses and minuses. I, I'm not. The, the scoring is still out on all this stuff for me. <laughs> And uh, Kim, I you we I you know I've talked to you in the past about this, but you also on TikTok and Instagram and with the podcast talk about the fifties and the old time and the rom the, that Hollywood romance lifestyle of, and it's great. I mean, I look as you know as a manners guy, I dig that kind of that that old Hollywood style too. But what do you think is missing from modern the way modern people are dating today, or me and really what you're finding to be like the biggest difference from that era. Yeah, I think so. Yes, yeah, so we've talked about this. And I think there's like two things going on. One is that I'm sure when you're comparing today's real life to the 50s real life, we probably lost some chivalry in there, some social norms. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think guys can definitely get away with like, not paying and not opening the door for you and not doing those things now so that would have never uh, that would have never happened but then we're also <laughs> making the comparison between like 1950s hollywood right. um that we're kind of glorifying and then today and so also the rom-coms that, today which are ridiculous true if you so watch hallmark you think everybody is falling in love on a, on a mountain yeah. in a chalet i mean you know, it's you know so we have the same but fantasy think, things. But you know when you're watching something today, like that there's a difference because we're living both. But sometimes I think when you're looking back to that time, you might think like the better days of the past, it was like that and kind of buy into it a little bit more. But I think in that way, it's like, you know, the look across the room and someone's very charming and Cary Grant-esque. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of us kind of like want that but yeah who knows complete that fantasy that's the complete fantasy of what these girls want and the guys too because you can't have spencer tracy was a drunk and yet he was in love and was on the screen with with katherine hepburn and they were romanticizing but real life it was a mess and if you go through all those hollywood stars which of course we don't because we don't want to ruin our illusions from rock hudson down uh you know there were no star they were it was all pretend yeah it was in a studio but some of it's not pretend like how we were saying like the chivalry oh well chivalry that or, should i think that should always or be. even like the commitment aspect like then i think if a guy found a girl that they thought was like wife material like they would get married it wouldn't be like well i'm gonna go on some other dates or like i want to focus on myself like no one was saying well they that didn't think of, of that that there's much more psychoanalysis today yeah, i think yeah. that's a very big difference nobody so if if you were psychoanalyzed they put you into a crazy ass uh there was no such thing as as dwelling into your emotions your personal emotions get it out you know talk to your mother talk to your father talk to your grandma and that was it that was your that was your psychiatry unless you were very unfortunately not well but if you were just dating and not happy you know mm -hmm. parents would say get over it I, you know it's ridiculous so i think it, it was more uh, people didn't dwell on your feelings uh, we even laugh about that um, there was a comedian, I, I don't know if it was Jerry Seinfeld, actually, who said about reading books to his children at night that his, his mother would read him the same book all the time. And now today they discuss, well, should I read this book? Should I read that book? Should I read this last night? You know, there's a whole um, era of um, a lot more, and, and it's very nice, uh, caring. I think parents in the old days go to sleep, <laughs> close the light and go to bed. You read a story last night. We don't need to read it tonight. And well, I, there is a different approach. So, I mean, you talk about the approaches and I guess, and there's certain things that, you know, you're always looking at, but Kim, when you, when you see in modern dating today, you know, you talk about, um, you know, when, when you sit down and whether they're, uh, they're going to be on time, which if you're not on time, I find to be insanely rude in general, in general, I hate that drives me nuts. And if not, just like text somebody, let them know you're running late. But, you know, along with that, the things where you are together do you find that 
people that you, when you, you, your friends and family that you're talking with or people that go on dates, do you find there be a lack of attentiveness from most people about how open they are or how much they're following up on meeting up and things like that? Um, you know, I think people create different rules. Like, for example, even the time thing. Yeah. A little bit of a double standard because if a guy was ever 10 minutes late for me, I'd be like, I'd text my friends. He's a horrible person. I'm like 20 minutes late to every date that I go on. <laughs> it's, it's, bad, it's, it's not good, but I think guys get there a few minutes early to make, or like if they're, you know, if they have good manners, I guess they get there a few minutes early. I feel like girls know they get there five minutes late. That's like the on time. So there are kind of different rules for all of these things. Um, why can't you both get there on time? I, mean, I guess I, <laughs> ideally. Also in New York City, like everyone's well, late. That's true. It's kind of different. That's true. Maybe, There's but... too much traffic. You can't, don't get to anywhere on time. Um, but what was the second part of your question? I feel like I didn't. Well, no, no. I mean, I, I think that's, that's – you were going into what I was mentioning about – you mentioned the rules. There are certain rules about what you people adhere to for dating. And oh, I actually yeah. want – I have some thoughts on that and what I think to find out whether you think it's it's rude or not. But – when we, when you, let's say you're at the date right now and you know, you're sitting down there and this guy doesn't really want to open up. Is, do you, is that something that you find to be common and a bit of a turnoff or is it like, okay, look, we just met and that's okay. Right. It's got their own reserve. Yeah. I don't think I expect someone to open up on a first date. Um, what I guess, again, it's like, what does open up mean? Like if they're sitting there and I'm like, where'd you grow up? They're like around. And I'm like, like, then I'd be like, what the hell? But if it's like, they don't want to get into their like family dynamics or any sensitive subjects, like, of course that's, that's okay. Yeah. But I think it depends also, maybe you're the kind of person who likes to get deep with someone pretty quick and whatever. And then they're not, that's probably just not a good match for you after a while. But I think only like by the like third date, you should kind of be expecting for someone to give you a little bit more than just surface. And if then they are just surface, then maybe that's like not for you, but yeah, I don't know. I think that you can't like expect someone to tell all their deepest, darkest secrets. Yeah. Right? And who wants to know that on a first date? Yeah. Or if they date, did, it would be, be a weird, little bit, pro- right? yeah, you, then that's a red flag. Yeah. I think we discussed that with somebody recently, one of the uh, coaches that was saying that, uh, you know, if a guy does come out off like that, oh, or yeah, the, or, you yeah, know, yeah. or or a woman, you know, then they really need some outside help. You're not there to analyze his right. personal It's like you problems. want them to be like honest and real with right. you, but then if they sit down and dump everything on you, there's like, okay, there's something actually probably going on. Going on. Yeah, I mean, that's help. not good to do with anybody in any passing. I mean, yeah. that's so I definitely would. I, I would imagine that would just be a big red flag coming from the gate. And you mentioned the one thing that, you know, Kim, you mentioned when you talk to your tech, your friends, if you're waiting there or things like that, are you a fan of when people do text during a call during a date or I know not fan, but how rude on a level of one to 10, do you find that? Uh, let me wait, let me, before you answer, let me cut ca- a caveat. Okay. It's, um, okay. You got an important, per- like you they say, look, maybe they're, they're someone from work. I got to get back to them real quick. You say you're Atari. I'm just talking like in general, like, Oh, let me, I gotta, I gotta go text this guy really quick. My buddy or whatever it is. Okay. So I feel different. If it was a first date, I would really not like that. Yeah. If you like already kind of been going out with the person and they say like, you know, you're, you're less dialed in like on the person yeah. and you're kind of like, Oh, one second, let me respond to something. That's fine. But I think if it's more than like once or twice, for the two hours you commit to sitting across to someone for, mm-hmm. at first drink or for dinner, I would find it rude. I, I wouldn't rate it a 10. I'd probably give it like a six. Okay. So here's another scenario. And Gail, I'm interested to hear what you think about it too. So let's say that you're out with some friends, a girlfriend, so you guys are out and you're at a restaurant. Is it rude for somebody to come up and approach you and a group of people? Well, they do all the time. <laughs> so, I mean, I must say I've struck a chord in wherever I go and it's been really very nice. Yeah. I like, my husband is hysterical with it, but people from wherever I am. Oh, you mean like a in, fan or something? Oh, is, are you talking about a fan or yeah. just someone I don't know? Well, more about, more about if it was somebody that's trying to pick up someone. So oh, well, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Girlfriends and like a single guy, one yeah. of your friends 
people and they came over and was like, hey, and tried to talk to them? I don't think, well, you know what? I'm not in the dating scene. I right. don't know how these people date anymore. That to me would be something that I, I can't imagine a, a guy would come over to a table with a bunch of girls and signal one person out. That to right. me just doesn't, that, that doesn't fly with me. Um, but I'm not big on all this kind of dating and all the apps and all this stuff. I still like the old fashioned setups and um, meeting somebody, either a friend recommends yeah. or whatever. Uh, so I don't know about that kind of dating. But I, as far as fans coming up, they can come up to me all the time. Like, let me tell you about my fans. <laughs> not dating. Like, that's not, not dating. Not all. dating. No, Telling me to watch us. That's that's what I like. Yeah. No, we know Poppy's got it locked down. By the way, I know everybody wants to meet Poppy as well. So I think I know. Well, come on, yeah. <laughs> yes, I know that that's going to be a big deal. But so it's be a big at, <laughs> I wait. We're all waiting. I mean, they're going to you know hang out in Palm Beach or something. But. Yeah. You know, you mentioned that you mentioned the part about the friends, and I always find offering friends advice to be a very touchy subject mm-hmm. when it comes to whether it's rude or not. Like my friends, it's an open book. I hope I hope that they are free to tell me what's going on, good or bad. Mm-hmm. What point? How how? In what process do you think it's fair to tell a friend like, "Look, this person is not not right for you," like off the gate? Or I don't believe anybody should do that. Really? I really I really think that's it's because, you know, two people can have chemistry that other people don't realize what goes on. Uh-huh. And um, I, they can say, you know, give their opinion that uh, this might not be the person I would choose for you, but you have to make that choice. Not, you know, everyone. That's why there's so many people marrying so many different other people. Yeah. <laughs> if everybody liked the same person, there would be no, there would be no variety. I think that. it depends also how bad it is. Like if. Oh, if somebody's like, abusive. No, no, of well, course. yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I think it's like, I've had got guy, like um, not boyfriends, but like situationships that I would introduce to friends and you can kind of tell when they're not like obsessed with somebody. Like it's all the way you say it. Like yeah. if, if they're like, Oh yeah, they're nice. Versus if they're like, I totally see this for you. Like what a good match. Like you can kind of suss that out. And I think only like with one boyfriend have my friends. And that was after I complained for months and months and months. Uh-huh. My friends like, yeah, you should probably get out of this. And I don't think they would have said something if I wasn't the one already the saying shame. problems. Yeah. Like right. if your friend's like, I'm so in love, I'm so happy. And you just don't like the guy. Like you can't say anything. It's just, if it's like hurting your friend. Yeah. Right? I think there, I think there's a fair line between trying to, you don't want to upset your friend, but then again, you want to look after your friend. And yeah. the worst thing to happen is this thing goes down to the wire and you're like, I got to spend the rest of my friend's life with this person. You're like, this is just. It's not about you. Well, but the yes. truth is, it's not about the friend. Very good point. Yes. Very often, and very often, and I've said this to Kim many times, and I've lived through it. The friends you had in college are friends from college. They don't necessarily have to be friends when you're married. Mm-hmm. And the friends that you're married might not be friends with when you're a widow or when you get divorced because you have different stages in your life. If you're very, very lucky to have a friend that goes through your whole life, and I have maybe two that have known me since I'm a young child till now, uh, but that's a rarity because your lives take different different roads and you go in different ways. You can still yeah. like each other as a friend. So I, I think your friends have to, you have to but see them. you don't them. drop your friends just because you don't your drop them, boyfriend but no, no, doesn't no. like them. You don't drop them, but sometimes your life changes and their life changes and it doesn't, you don't go together. Your your friend might not have a boyfriend that gets along with your boyfriend. Yeah. So you know what? That That's just circumstances. That's just nature. And you can't make that happen. You know, unless you date each other's friends. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the only uh, answer with that. But um, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like you could have an individual friendship with the person, but right. you're not doing double dates. Exactly. Yeah. It's like yeah. unfortunate, but I yeah, guess. Yeah, but that's life. You get coffee and. Right. You, don't you see them on your own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I will say, I mean, I've seen, you know, I'm fortunate to have a lot of friends that I've had, you know, for, you know, decades now. But when I had kids, you right. know, when you, you start hanging out with other parents and. Parents. It's just, you know, we do weekend sports and, you know, right. I'm, I'm that soccer lacrosse dad. So you see these people more often than between that and work. More often you see. Like, yeah, friends you've had friends. Friends. 
that becomes your friend base. Yeah. Because a- that's your common interest. Your children are your basically your primary interest. So the parents who have the same, the children in the class are naturally going to be your friends. It might not be the same friends yeah. you had growing up, but they are still the people you see the most of. And, and speaking of people you see the most of, so I want to say, set up an example for you, a scenario, and I want to see what your take is on it, Kim, and also Grandma Gail. But let's say you are out with somebody and it's a second date and you see a group of friends, like if another table comes in, how are you, what do you think is the right way to introduce this person to them? Oh, that's good. I, I run into that a lot. I always just say, like, let's say his name is... Um... Sam. <laughs> Let's go back to Harvey. 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 Harvey, Harvey. Harvey could be our name. Harvey today. from Palm Beach. Yes. <laughs> um, I'll just say, hi guys, like this is Harvey. So I wouldn't have to say, like, this is my friend Harvey, this is my boyfriend Harvey, this is the guy I've gone on 10 dates with Harvey. Yeah. Who just and like, and these are my friends from Cornell, whatever. Yeah. Um, I think that's the easiest way to do it. It gets hard when then the group is like, Oh, how do you guys know each other? Yeah. And be like it's our second day <laughs> i don't know I, it's not embarrassing right. so because they're going through it too yeah. or they've been through it. yeah yeah hold on one second okay i'm just gonna pause something for a second okay yes. hang on sorry it's gotta go because kids have got to think you see Where are you going for dinner? A good book. Hey, you want to come? Where are you going? No, I kind of want to stay home. Okay. I'm going with Jeffrey at 8 o'clock. Is it late? Okay, sorry about that. Just had to fix something on the audio. Apologize. No problem. All right, so we'll edit all that stuff part out. We were talking about we left off where, you know, you see some friend out there. Now, I have the uh, the other part to the question of when you see people out. Is it rude or what would you do if that if the person you're dating did not introduce you that way? When if they introduced to who you are, you know, or they weren't so eager to say that you're on a date. They kind of just you could tell they're rushing through it. How would you react to that? <laughs> I mean if they were like they're happy they'd be on a date with. No, actually, you know, I guess I, no one would ever like lie about like who I like they wouldn't they wouldn't lie about it being a date, but sometimes yeah. Like what happens is a friend of theirs comes over to the table and they say, hi, how are you? And they don't introduce me at all. Yeah. That's, that's, that's rude. That happens all the time. I feel like. Really? Uh, yeah. Do you like, find that like, rude? I would think that's pretty rude. I do too. Oh, I think it's rude. Like. I would say I have to tell them it's rude. Yeah. I'm trying. I don't think it's happened recently, but I feel like that's definitely happened before. And I think I've probably done it too. And that it's like, sometimes you're like, flustered not like sort of flustered or you don't even remember like how you know the people who came over to you like like that's like let's say it's like my parents friends and I don't even like know and I'm like hi how are you doing and like then they keep walking like I'm not gonna be like wait while you walk to your table (laughs) let me introduce you to my second date like I barely know them right well that's different if it's like my friend like of course but if it's like a loose connection like why do I have to introduce them Whenever I, whenever I can't remember somebody's name and like I'm with somebody and see somebody coming over, I'm always like, Hey, real quick, just introduce yourself first. So they can say you're yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, I can't, I can't do it. I have that as secret. It's always, I, I would tell somebody, I'll be like, you know, how do you spell your, how do you spell your name again? And they would always do the whole thing. And then right. I did this one time with somebody at work and, <laughs> and I, and I, I knew this guy for years and I'd seen him out and I was like, I was like, Steve, uh, I was like, how do you spell your name again? And he's like, Smith. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, all right, man, look, I'm like, here's what I did. Okay. It's a little, I forget his last name sometimes. And so I played it off and he was a good guy, but I was just like, it, that was the only time it's backfired. I guarantee it's a go-to for the record. Yeah. Super that's basic. so funny. If it's something super basic. <laughs> and they're like, this guy's it idiot. was very bad. It was very bad. I knew the guy too. So I felt even awful, but na- faces I'm good with names. Not so much. Yeah. But another, another question about, is it rude? Is that what, ha- what do you find rude? Well, oh, sorry. On your scale of is it rude or not, let's say that, you know, a guy meets up with you at a bar and you're with, you know, four girl, four girlfriends. Mm -hmm. Is it rude if he doesn't buy everyone around the drinks? Such a good one. I think I take a mental note if the guy doesn't buy it for everybody, Mm -hmm. but it's super rare that they do. Really? I would think the opposite. 
I would, th- I, but I mean, I obviously I believe you, but I mean, it's interesting. I would have thought somebody would try to like show off by doing that. Yeah, you would think. And it, I mean, this happened last summer. I went to a bar out in Montauk. I didn't even know the guy. He just like came over and introduced himself to me. Like he wanted to get to know me. And he was like, can I buy you a drink? And then didn't buy it for the two girls I was with. But I, at that point, I'm not going to be like, you're not going to buy one for my friends because it's not really my job. And then eventually when he walked away, my friends were like, that was pretty rude. Like we we would all say how rude it is afterward, but um, it doesn't always happen. Like also I'm trying to think when you're meeting your friend's boyfriends for the first time, Mm -hmm. like sometimes I feel like they want to come off well and they should get everybody drinks and things. um, Usually in that situation they do, but I feel like not always either, but I I always take a mental note. So I feel it's, it's hard because it's like you're not going to judge someone for not spending a lot of money, but it is just like the thought and the manners. Of yeah. that. Do you have a lot of friends that really do do that all the time? They're overly generous with, yeah. with everybody's friends. And yeah. I, I, I find it amazing because they end up treating all or everybody who's with their girlfriend. And that's yeah. not and maybe fair I'm either. comparing it to, to some of my to friends some of who are amazing with that are. way, but um others aren't and then it's like kind of awkward well then you don't like them <laughs> yeah. you write them off your list so what all right so speaking of paying for stuff i want let's the low-hanging fruit the topic of all should the guy always pay when he's taking somebody out yes grandma gail but they don't have to it doesn't have to be expensive I mean, they could go for an ice cream yeah. or they could go for, for anything. They could go for cotton candy and a, on a boardwalk. Uh, but I do think if the fellow is initiating the date uh-huh. that he should be paying reasonably for a long period of time uh, a, until you're really a couple. And then when you're a couple, I think, you know, you, you can make dinner it. and, and yeah. do all the things That's- for I do think the man should be um, should be paying unless unless the women's in, a woman's initiating the date. So you and think that's a good question? So let's say Kim actually Kim asked Harvey out and they meet up. Why would it, I have asked Harvey out? <laughs> well, I <laughs> we're just hypothetically. You're a forty year old woman in a workplace. I'm not talking about somebody who's in their twenties, who's you know relatively new on the scene of dating. But if you're been around the block and you're a successful woman in business. And I find that I'm attracted to a man who is in business uh, that's an, yeah. a, a similar business. I don't see anything wrong with want to have dinner. And then if she said it, put your credit card on the table and pay for it. So what or, if she says no, don't. What if I, she I, didn't have a good job? Then she wouldn't ask him. She, so she can't ask somebody out unless she has a good job? No, she can. But she then she would do something appropriate to have what she can afford. Then okay, she, so no she matter pick, what. She should pick it up if she's initiated. The I date. don't know, though, because, like, let's say, guys, I'm going out with, like, now. Let's say the first three dates they paid. And then I'm like, are we going to do something this week? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, great. Let's go to um, this restaurant. I'll, I'll grab the reservation. I'm, not, I'm still not paying for the date. Well, but you have to know the guy's circumstances. Yeah, I don't think I don't think you would do this if you didn't know his circumstances. The circumstances, right. or, or, yeah. or if he if he's able to pay, or he evidently wants you to make the reservation. There are some fellows, and including your your grandfather, would never have done that. He made all he still oh, is right. making all the yeah. reservations. He likes to do it himself, and so does your father. So it depends on the type of man you end up with. Some people like to be in control. If he says, Kim, you make it, I'm busy, or I, I, you, you know the restaurant scene better than I know it, then then fine, do it. But I mean, a lot of men really like to do that. That's yeah, something I think that they, they still like to do. do. I don't know when I've made a reservation for a date, but sometimes it's not like a date, a reservation kind of date. Like, let's say it's like, um, let's grab like uh, a bite and walk around or whatever. That's still we'll a just, date. No, no, sorry. I mean, we're just going <laughs> to, we're going to walk in somewhere. We're not going to yeah. make a reservation. Still a date. No, I know it's a date, but who, like I didn't make it. He didn't make it. There was no reservation. Well, you could offer to pay if you feel like it. I don't. I don't think there's no. a right or wrong, but I think most men feel that it's their their thing. They've initiated the evening and they want to pay for it. That's fair. And it's an old fashioned way of of living. I mean, I don't know today if it's completely changed. Still pretty expected. Okay. I think it's more now. Do I do the fake like? Can I split it with you? Okay, so what if they say, what if Harvey's like, yeah, sure, go ahead. You can split it with me. Yeah. I'll, I'll split it with him, but then I won't go on a second date. <laughs> <laughs> I had that once. <laughs> yeah, someone, someone said, oh, he was like, 
oh, I, I heard like feminism nowadays. Sure, put the card in. I, I said, really? I should have just done it. And then he's like, okay, I'll just do it. I don't know. It was, it was, that was bad. That was awkward. And by the Harvey in this situation, it's a nice 28 year old man. And, you know, so he just happens to have a, a different. You know, back in the day, name. Oh, there's nothing wrong with Harvey. Nothing wrong. There's apps. There's probably a 29 year old Harvey out there right now. You're gonna end up with a Harvey. Yeah. So don't say anything. There's Harveys. There's Walters. There's all kinds of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So, well, okay. Another thing about the restaurant, and let's say you are, you know, you have you're you're dating somebody, and you go out to a restaurant, and you see that person out with somebody else while you're out with somebody else. Do you acknowledge them, or do you just? <laughs> Like an like uh, someone That's, you've gone out with already. Yes. Yeah, you know you're yeah you've gone like you and Harvey have gone on two dates. Well, you're not going. You're not staying. You're not, so you're not exclusive. You're not exclusive. You're not exclusive. So you know Harvey's out with somebody else. No. Oh, it's really awkward. That's never happened to me. It hasn't. Gone on a been actively dating someone and then seen them on a date. Yeah. With somebody else. No. Really? No. I maybe I've, I'll see someone at a bar or something, but with not somebody like somebody else. With, no, no, not so really. Else. If you did, would it be okay to? I can't believe it. And in, in the small world we live in, you never run into a guy with it that you're going out with. Oh, um, all right, okay. Like no, like maybe one time. Now that I'm thinking about it. Okay, but what's the question? Well, no. Okay, so let's let's say let's say you did. How would you go about that? Is it a is it proper just to kind of walk past, ignore him, or I don't ignore? No. Oh wait, now I, this has happened to me. Now that I'm thinking about it. Um. In that case, I ignored. But I think uh, ideally, I would just be like, "Hi," and exactly. keep walking. But not any like stop and chat and be like, "So who's this?" Right. Not, none of that. Right. Yeah. What happens? Going out with them again. Yeah, but well, that would be it. Yeah. But what happens if, let's say, another example is, and I want to be conscious of our time here too. But um, let's say, for example, you and Harvey are going on, you know, a couple dates already, and he's got like, you know, uh, an office party or something like that. Or holiday party, is it? And he's, but he doesn't ask you. Is this something that you think should be a turn off or? That wouldn't bother me. No. Um, like maybe if he was going to a wedding and he has a plus one. Okay. And yeah. He didn't. But then how would I know he had a plus one? What if he, he told you? Like he goes, yeah, well, I, you know, I have this wedding this weekend, or I have a wedding coming up in like in like a month, and but he doesn't say anything. And the month comes closer, and you found out he had a plus one. That wasn't me. Well, oh, he, no. didn't, he didn't take anybody. Oh, sorry, that he had the option to bring yeah. a plus one. Um, I, depends if I liked him. I'd be annoyed. I, I think if I really liked him, I'd be upset um, and wonder, like, where he sees this going. Like, yeah. why? But um, if it's, like, really early days and you've only got yeah. a few dates, like, I definitely don't expect – to meet his friends and his family, like, and go to a weekend together at someone's, but like, I think it'd have to be kind of serious. What ha What's the time frame you think for somebody to be okay to meet the friends and the family? Well, friends and family are totally different, in my opinion. Like, friends. When Grandma Gail get the get the uh, get to meet Harvey. <laughs> really, I think like down the line. Like, I think unless it was just a happenstance, like uh, she was here when mm -hmm. he picked me up, kind of thing. But um, I think. With friends, I introduce guys to friends before I'm boyfriend and girlfriend most of the time. Mm -hmm. So early, um, at least after probably like four or five dates. Mm -hmm. um, family, not until probably you've been like boyfriend and girlfriend. Because you're not going to say like this is a guy I'm seeing. Like you want to say this yeah. is my boyfriend. Um, so it just depends when that is in your relationship. So I think as soon as you're like exclusive. Maybe. Okay. And I, so speaking about making sure you can introduce, introduce somebody to Gail. One thing you you talk about is I've seen Gail on TikToks and all the, all the Grandma Gail's rules, but about looking, stop looking for perfect or, and I'm, I'm summarizing what she was saying, but, you know, stop looking for this perfect thing because nobody's perfect and you're never going to find perfect. So, Gail, what in your mind is the perfect future grandson-in-law? Well, we talk about this all the time. Kimmy and I have a completely somebody you enjoy spending time with, uh -huh. and I think it's uh, a, a I agree with that. Yeah, <laughs> a relationship that you develop it doesn't happen instantaneously. Yeah. I think it happens 
maybe it takes months of going out to find that you have common interests. You like to do things together. You develop common interests together, which is what which is what I did with my mm-hmm. husband. We had no interests in common. I didn't like sports. He didn't like museums. So now we both like the same. We we do it a little bit of each. Yeah. Um, I think I think what is something. It, you know, I'm not about that it has to be the person that sends a spark across the room, but you have to be somewhat attracted to them or say that um, this is somebody I think I could have a wonderful future with, uh, whether it be because he's smart, uh, whether he is um, attentive and kind. I mean, kind to me is very big. They think yeah. of you first. Uh, you know, if he's always thinking about his friends and he says, oh, listen, I got to go to a football game and there's no time for you in that schedule, then he's not for you. I mean, in my opinion, um, you have to be first on the list as you should be giving him priority. So um, I think it takes a little bit of um, a little effort yeah. today. It doesn't happen instantaneously. And uh, I think that's where the young people, uh, especially the 20 somethings, don't have the patience to give it a little time. It's not going to happen the first, second or third date. It just doesn't. Yeah, Uh, I don't think. And um, so I think you have to build on a relationship. Kim? Um, Yeah, I don't think anyone thinks that relationships are going to happen after the first date. Um, I think everyone agrees that that takes time. I think they think chemistry is going to happen on the first date. Didn't we learn from somebody there is no chemistry? Chemistry is something you build on together. No, you, they were saying (laughs) something else and you made them say that after you bullied them. (laughs) Oh, I was a bully? (laughs) I have to agree. I have to agree with Kim on this. You're not going to. If you don't, if if it's not, if there's no spark or that chemistry, you're not going to say, you know what, let's give it five more tries. Ooh, that's five. what she thinks. Yeah, she thinks know. ten dates, and then on the tenth, ten, <laughs> yes, and then the chemistry will be there. Yeah. Oh, by then, I mean at that point, yeah. I mean, you probably never seen. You have no choice at that point. I mean, might as well just. <laughs> okay. That's true. So, no, but it's not about like settling. I guess this is what it is now. It's about like finding the connection. Because it's a real connection, not because he forced it. That's fair. Yeah. And I, look, I think that at the end of the day, it's there's a lot of what Grandma Gail's been, you know, that you find so attractive about Grandma Gail's era that I really believe we need to bring back. And I think that's okay to, there's something, when I was talking about like manners and etiquette, stuff like that. And, you know, yes, I like to poke fun at the annoying person in the Starbucks line or, you know, Uber people in Ubers that are acting obnoxious, stuff like that. But when it really comes down to it, it's about how you, how you really treat people. And I, I firmly believe that in the fact that, um, you know, it's cool to be able to be all right with treating people well. I don't, I think that, that there's this whole, this macho jerk mentality to me is just uh, the bad boy vibe, bad girl vibe. You know, I, I don't find it. the bad boy and the bad girl. Yeah, I don't They're find that to be partners. very useful today. But, mm-hmm. but I do... Yeah, no feels nice to be treated nicely like no one I think everybody wants um someone to actually like like them and treat them well unless they have severe self-hatred um but it gets murky, obviously yeah and I firmly believe there's a Harvey out there right now listening to this (laughs) and he's gonna be like wow you know this Thank just you. hit on everything I was thinking about. So I'll keep you updated, Richie. <laughs> That'll be good. All right, Grandma, Gail, Kim, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Before we leave, quick, tell us where we can find you online. Plug the socials. Thank you. Um, you can find us. We're Excuse My Grandma on TikTok, Instagram. We're, our podcast is also called Excuse My Grandma, and we're everywhere that you listen to podcasts. Great. All right. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining me. My name is Richie Freeman, Modern Manners Guy, and please check out Excuse My Grandma. I promise you it's hilarious. You'll love it, and keep them in your mind. All right, everyone, take care. I'll see you next time.